Good morning, Moya. It is such an honor to have you here with us this morning. I cannot wait to have this discussion because you're one of these ladies who always exudes warmth and radiance and positivity. So I'm really looking forward to what our discussions will, um, will discover about you. But more importantly, it gives Thank me you. such great pleasure in introducing you to the membership, um, to our listeners and even our viewers as we go live with this, um, so that they too can understand who is the lady behind the name and behind the face, all right? So Moya, why don't we start by you telling okay. us who is Moya Liber Barnes? Tell us your a little bit about your journey, where you've come from, and where you are today. Okay, so um, I grew up in a predominantly male environment. I'm an only girl with uh, several male cousins, and if I wanted to be part of the gang, I had to act not girly but like one of the boys if I wanted to tag along. Um, I grew up on a farm um, from a humble, humble beginnings. My father was a farmer. And I grew up seeing my parents just always sharing, always our, our employees on the farm were our family members. Uh, in that district where people would share at Christmas time, at Easter time, whatever one family had, you know, it would be shared around the community. So I grew up being very humble. I grew up being very kind, knowing that it's always good to look out for one's, uh, you know, brother and sister, especially if they are needy. And then I left uh, the country, so to speak, and came into Kingston, and uh, a whole new world opened for me. Um, I moved from a shy you know, retiring person to somebody who was now thrown into an environment where uh, everybody was busy and everybody was looking out for themselves. I got a scholarship from the Bank of Jamaica and I went to the University of the West Indies where I studied economics and management. Mm -hmm. uh, went back to Bank of Jamaica and um, there everything happened. I met, uh, I met my husband, uh, who was doing some business at BOJ. Um, I had my children while I was at BOJ and my career kind of just took off while I was there. Um, and, and those are the main influences really so far in my early, early career life. Yes. Lovely, lovely. Moya, it is, you know, I, I started by saying there's a certain warmth that I associate with you. And, and now I kind of understand why, because you speak so much of the humility and the kindness and the sharing. How have those principles um, guided your career path? Or do you think that they've influenced you in any way, shape or form to the leader that you are today? I think they are. Um, I've often said to my managers, uh, no one should be left behind. Our success, is as strong as our weakest link. If there's a team member who's not doing so well, who needs guidance, who needs help, let's reach out, let's provide the guidance, let's provide the help. Oftentimes people don't do well because it's not because they don't know the job, but sometimes there are background issues. So I'm, I'm a kind of emotional manager where I get really involved in my team members' lives. Um, if there's a problem, I try to solve it. If I can't solve it, I find somebody who will. But my team members are never, ever left alone or feeling alone or feeling that there is no other way out. Because they know if you come to my office and take a seat, there is a seat in my office that people call my counseling seat. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And that, that's where the tears flow and that's where you know, the beans get spilled mm -hmm. and I will cry with them. Mm -hmm. I cry and I hug. I do that a lot. So COVID is really getting to me now because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely can identify with that. Would you say that what you've described really would be your guiding principles and success traits? Because I think there's a lot that you would probably share or are there others? Are there other specific uh, guiding principles for your success? I always felt, uh, Wendy, that I need to work hard. And over time, I've always felt that maybe I need to work that much harder than my counterparts. Um, 
at in the central bank when I was at BOJ, it was a predom predominantly male dominated environment where the senior team leaders were male. Uh, those who were climbing the, the ladder, the success ladder, were male. Mm -hmm. Those who went off on scholarships, most of them were male. There were a gang of girls who went off as well. But I've always felt to prove myself, I needed to do that much better. Mm -hmm. But I also knew that if I worked hard, uh, if I did all that I needed to do, gave it my best shot, that I would be successful. Mm -hmm. I had a boss who had so much faith and confidence in me. Um, he's now departed, but he really influenced my life. I remember when I came back from university, he said to me, I'm going to give you this particular job. You're going to have a hard time doing it because you're young. Um, nobody expects you to be put in charge of that particular area. And uh, I outshone. I mean, people spoke about me and how well, uh, you know, I was doing. And, and I just, I, I give that to him, the confidence that he had in me and the fact that I was determined not to let him down. Fantastic. Moya, you said something that kind of resonates with me from my days in core banking. Um, and I remember that at some point it became a, a you know, a really sticky point with, with, with our employees where we spoke a lot about stretch goals. And oftentimes it evoked a really negative emotion because people thought, you know, you, you, you don't seem to, to appreciate the fact that I'm doing so much and I'm giving so much. And yet when I hear you speak about it, it was confidence that was placed in you to give you something that, you know, may not have been comfortable. What would you say to, to employees now who are challenged with the concept of, you know, do a little bit more than is anticipated of you or that I believe in you enough to give you more than your counterparts? What would you say to these individuals? You know, um, part of who I am is to never fail and to always succeed. I've always wanted to be the best. Mm -hmm. and to be better than expected. Mm -hmm. And so if you give me a task, um, I will always want to better it. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, for example, at, at, at JMB Bank, um, we were given a, a target that was, it blew, blew our minds yes, <laughs> when we yes, heard yes. what it is. And, and people will tell you that I'm a planner. Mm -hmm. So from day one, I started planning. I said, okay, this is how I'm going to do it. And this is what I want to achieve. And even though the targets that I was given was really, really stretched already, I had already decided that I was going to do that and some. Right. I achieved it through planning. Mm -hmm. Just chipping away at what I plan to do, sharing my plans with you know, my team members, and asking them, guys, how do you think we can do this? Guys, um, you know, is this something that you think, uh, you know, if we work at it this way that we'll be successful? Right. And I always listen to my team members. I might not do everything that they suggest, <laughs> yes. but I take it into consideration and I will incorporate it. And that's yeah. been the secret for my success. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Moya. Um, <clears throat> we can move on now. Um, I think we've gotten a true sense of Moya and, and what inspires and drives you. So now we make it a little bit heavier uh, as we move into industry and, you know, some of the changes that we've seen happening. So from your experience in the industry, and you spoke about starting with uh, GOB, um, do you believe that your experience has been in any way, shape or form different from your male counterparts? as a female professional, um, and are there any specific instances that come to mind? I've been blessed to work at an institution which was founded by a female. She was a trailblazer in Jamaica's financial sector. And so at JMB Bank, we've always been encouraged, whether male or female, uh, I never think of myself as one sex. Um, we've always been encouraged to do our best, uh, give up our best, and, and we'll be noticed. I never feel that I've been sidelined or 
you know, uh, and my male counterpart is achieving. Uh, and I know this might be a, a cliche, a boring story because it's not, it's not my experience. My experience has not been that where because I'm a woman, I've been sidelined or because I'm a woman, uh, you know, I have not been able to, to achieve my goals. Right. What I do know, though, is because of I'm a woman, I've pressured myself to uh -huh. achieve. Uh -huh. I've pressured myself to be equal to or better than. Because in my mind, people are possibly looking out for, here she goes, she's a woman, and that's why she's not making it. And, or she's a woman, and so, you know, her emotions would probably stop her from going the full potential. Because men like to think that women are emotional. But I think there has to be a balance. And that's what makes women so successful, um, combining the, the push and the grind of the everyday work while softening that with some of you know, the, the undertones of love. And from you come from a place of love and you come from a place where you want all to succeed and all to do well, then your world certainly will be good. So I've... Um, yes, I've, I've been up against the glass ceiling, but I've been shattering them one pain at a time. Awesome. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> so to our listeners and our viewers out there, you understand when I say that there are just certain nuances that define truly who this lady is. And Moya, I'm telling you now, if you don't get it copyrighted by the time this is done, Undertones of Love is going to be one of my absolute favorite oh. things to use. That was truly awesome. Okay, so Moya, as a female leader... What are some of your, or what is one of your proudest accomplishments? And conversely, what is one thing that you remember or really stands out for you that would have challenged you during your career? Well, I would have mentioned last year. <laughs> right. When, when, you know, we pushed, um, we pushed so much. Uh, we were asked, the ax was really big. And, and we accomplished that. But my achieving the company goals and so on, those are big time for me. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe the biggest challenge I've had in my career is mentoring and coaching younger team members who some are lost, some are not sure where they want to be, what they want to do. And getting a team member who might be on a performance improvement plan, who is now a star performer, um, that gives me like the greatest satisfaction ever. Uh, just yesterday, uh, there was a young man who was on a performance improvement plan and um, he came off the plan. I decided to work with him and he came off the plan about six weeks ago. But yesterday, it was the end of the month, the end of the quarter. And that guy not only doubled his target, he tripled it. Oh, and wow. That gave me tremendous satisfaction. Right. Um, the joy that I felt was indescribable. So yes. just watching the young people grow and develop, especially if I've contributed somehow to the, this development, is probably my biggest success. Story. Yes, yeah, awesome, fantastic. It, it truly is about what you invest in people. Yes. Um, and giving them the confidence, of course, to to believe in themselves and their capacity. So, you know, job well done, Moya. Yeah, um, not to interrupt you, Wendy, but just to say, and I'm sorry if I'm talking too much, but just, to say, <laughs> <laughs> but just to say that as a leader, you must ensure that your team trusts you. And when they trust you and they know that you're coming from a place with their best interests in mind, They'll do anything for you. They, anything you ask, they'll be there for you and they'll climb the highest mountain along with you. Isn't that awesome? And I think that again has been my, a source of my success. Of course, of course. And, and I too believe in that philosophy that, um, you know, any good salesperson knows that the individual that they're selling to buys them first and product second. Um, that's right. So that's just another little nugget uh, to all of you out there, that if you really want people to take you seriously and believe in what it is that your vision is when you share it, truly they have to have some confidence in you and your own beliefs in what you're saying. Yeah. So Moya, thank you so much for that again. 
Um, can you tell us a little bit about what your message would be to young ladies who are entering what is still by and large perceived to be a male dominant field? Be yourself. Don't try to be who you think the company wants you to be. Give of your best. Don't try to achieve something that it's what they want you to achieve. If your heart is not in it, if you're not passionate about what you're doing, you're probably not doing the right thing. You're probably not in the right field. You don't need to, and this might be a little controversial, you don't need to, you don't need to, to be sexy. You don't need to be pretty. All you need to be is somebody who your employer will look at and say, there goes Wendy, there goes Moya. She's my best employer, employee. She will give of her best. She is dependable. She is trustworthy. She has a good heart. And Wendy, when you've achieved all of that, there is nothing that you cannot do. Get yourself qualified. Don't sit back. Get yourself qualified and move along. Wonderful, Moya. I mean, I, I cannot tell you how, how enriching this is for me. So to all of you out there, be a little envious because I do have Moya's number. I can pick up and call her <laughs> anytime. <laughs> um, you know, so Moya, I, I'm going to deviate just a little bit entirely from our planned interview this morning and say this. Sure. So the next thing that we're planning to do is to launch our mentorship program, and that should come on stream sometime in January. So I'm going to ask on your behalf out there, because I know everyone is going to want Moya to mentor them. But of <laughs> course, we have to get her to say yes. No pressure, Moya. I'm asking yes. you live here right now. No pressure. Um, <laughs> will we get an agreement and nod from you that you will agree to being one of our mentors? When they have been ment I've been mentoring almost all my life. Um, to say no to that would, to not be true to myself. <laughs> um, nothing would, would please me more or Excellent. give me more satisfaction than to have a young person look to me for guidance and to see that person blossom and grow in our financial uh, industry. Awesome. I, I, I'll be honored. To, awesome. to do that. Awesome. That'd be awesome. Fantastic. Fantastic. I am a hard task master. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be all fun and games, folks. Set goals, and we, we must meet yes. these goals. Fabulous. But, but yes, I'd be, I'd be honored. Yes. Thank you so much. We will be truly honored to have you. Um, so let's go back to our regularly scheduled program. Um, how do you maintain work life balance, Moya? What, what is your, I mean, in this ever-changing environment where things are being thrown at us from every single angle, sometimes I struggle a little bit, um, but I've never met uh, a fettered Moya. I've never seen Moya not looking like this, as a matter of fact, <laughs> on any given day. So how do you do it? Uh, and I'm going to put that to a strong support system. Everybody needs a strong support system. My husband of 32 years is the first element of my strong support system. We have two children. And I remember back in the days when I was working and doing my MBA, uh, you know, and having the kids, uh, he was there. Uh, he, he, he's been my greatest cheerleader. I don't think you'd want to hear me call him a cheerleader, but in fact, in fact, he is. And he, he, it doesn't bother him one bit. He, my success is his success. Yes. Uh, and people will tell me, sometimes I hear your husband talk about you and wow, I can just oh, see nice. his eyes. Yeah. So, so he's been, Winston has been my rock. And then I've had a small group of friends. Uh, with, we're godparents for each other's children and really tight, small knit. And um, they've been there for me and I've been there for them. So just having this support system behind me has really made my life almost a breeze. 
it has really helped me to do and achieve all the things that I've wanted to do and achieve. Fantastic, fantastic. Before we continue, I think it's really important that I pause to say, hi, Winston, I know you're going to be watching this. And thank you so much for the support that you've given to Moya because she really has been one of those instrumental ladies in shaping our financial services industry. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm thank going to you just a little bit to say, um, Moya, you, you touched on something that's really very important and it's um, building your social circles with people who understand your drive, your determination, and of course, what you, you perceive to be your end goal. Um, and it's really important because oftentimes, perhaps we don't understand the significance of having the right influences in our lives and how much that can derail us um, if they're not the right choices. So talk to us a little bit about, particularly our younger ladies coming up, about the image, um, the associations that we make and how they would move us forward or actually stunt our group, if you will. You know, when, the, when the, it, might, it might sound strange, but you have to really choose your friends. Uh, you go to an organization, you can choose the popular person who is the center and the life of the party, or you can choose the person who uh, has her head down to the wheel, work hard, and may not be the one who everybody goes to and flick around, but you can learn things from that person. Mm -hmm. It's really important to choose persons who are going somewhere, choose persons who are ambitious, choose persons who, yes, live their life, but certainly who also will give. They're altruistic. They are family persons like you. They have the same standards, the same uh, goals to achieve, uh, you know, family oriented. And once you find that person, then certainly go ahead and create the, the friendship because that person is going to be your backbone. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have your family, but when you're down and there will be days when you're down, mm -hmm. you're going to need somebody to say, you know, Today is not a good day for me. Right. I'm, I'm not feeling happy. I'm not feeling sad. You know, this is my problem. And that person is not going to say, oh, cuss them off. Oh, tell them to go away. Oh, tell them. Right, no. right. That person is going to sit with you and say, okay, let's strategize about how we're going to resolve this issue. Let's see, you know, maybe you said so and so, but have you ever looked at it this way? And yes, you will ultimately make the final decision, but just hearing the different perspectives and knowing that those perspectives are being made with your best interest, not necessarily saying it cliche and say, oh, you know, let them go away. But they know that, you know, what your heart is. And so having these friendships, it's really, really critical. Having persons who will tell you, no, you're not doing something right. right. No, don't do it that way. You know, I, I think it's very important that we have heirs. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that. Certainly a message that I think not only our young ladies, but our young men as well coming up yes. in the industry need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about COVID and what, if anything, it has taught you about Moya, the leader. So COVID... <laughs> in March uh, meant fear and anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, my team, just like every other team, I'm sure across the Caribbean, across the world, were anxious. They didn't know people had thoughts about, am I going to lose my job? Mm -hmm. Am I going to get sick? Am I, you know, all, all the nuances. And as a leader, part of my job was to be in front with them. I said, guys, we have to keep ourselves safe, but at the same time, we need to keep our jobs. We need to ensure that the company continues as a going enterprise. We need to ensure that our clients feel comfortable knowing that we are there notwithstanding all the fear, notwithstanding cutback in hours and all the things that came with, with, with COVID. 
And one of the things I did, uh, I went to work every single day during COVID. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I have an office, so I could kind of be by myself there. But my team just knowing that I was there, my team just knowing that, uh, you know, you can call me and I'll come by your branch. You call me and I'll fix whatever problem. If there's an outbreak in your branch, I'm there. If there's an outbreak in your branch, there are solutions which I will give you. I led from the front. And I think that's what did it for me. That's what did it for the team. And certainly it, it was a JMB effort. Um, our leaders were there if I needed, uh, if I wasn't sure about how to handle a particular problem. There's my, my HR department, which always had a wealth of information and advice. Mm -hmm. You know, there's my CEO, um, people who are willing for you to just bump things off because it was something that none of us have ever right. seen before. Mm -hmm. But I think the most important takeaway for me was just my ability to lead from front. I think that made a difference. Wonderful, wonderful. You were able to, to really walk the talk. Yes. Um, and that, that in itself builds a lot of credibility and integrity with teams. So yes. good for you, Moya. Mm -hmm. um, I know that earlier on you said that, you know, while you are aware of the perceptions of ladies as pertains to some of their experiences, um, <clears throat> you were fortunate enough not to, to look at it from that perspective, but more that you were recognizing as a female, you wanted to do more. But what advice would you give to, or sorry, what advice would you give to, to young ladies coming into the industry around the evolution of the financial services sector? Do you believe that we have evolved and become more accepting of female professionals at leadership levels? You know, when did the days of the trusted financial advisor who would come to work dapperly dressed leave at 11 and go and play golf and leave the second in charge female to do the, 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 the hard work. Those days are gone. Mm -hmm. I think men, men have realized that women, women are equal to them in everything. Clients have come to trust women as their money, money managers, even more so than men nowadays. Because when we speak, we speak with authority. Mm -hmm. We don't delegate. So if I tell my client that I will have something done by tomorrow at 12, it will be done by tomorrow at 12 because I'm not going to ask somebody to do it and ensure that it's done by tomorrow at 12. Um, so women have become trusted in the financial environment. Women, men realize that we are equally, if not more so, knowledgeable about financial services. And just like we are in the home where we make things work, we, make, we fix things, we do that in the financial service sector. If, if I'm creating a product, for example, if I have an initiative to sell, I can look at a mortgage from a woman's point of view, from a man's point of view, and I can create a blend that is gonna be good for the person, the client who is taking the mortgage, as well as for my institution. Because where I'm coming from is one where I'm more rounded. And I think maybe, and I'm not hitting out against my male counterpart, but I don't think they are as rounded as women are, mm -hmm. but just because of who we are and where we're coming from. That background of homemaker, that background of mother, that background of fixing and always making things right. So as a newbie coming into the financial sector, I say to you, know your stuff. Come from a place of knowledge so that people will trust you. If you promise and you give your word to a client, keep your word. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that people look out for. Be honest with your client. Never take them on a run. In their loan payments, for example. Don't, yes, we want the loan to be collected, but at the same time, we have to also look, what are the alternate ways that I could help this client? Is it that he has a child going to school or somebody's ill and therefore he might need some other assistance 
um, in another area, which then will eventually lead to him being able to pay the loan. So just the different perspectives that we're able to look at as a woman and as a female, those things are very, very important in the financial service sector now. Fantastic. Well, how do you encourage your team for success? I tell them, you are as strong as your weakest link. No one should be left behind. Yes, there's performance improvement plan, but that's not good. Let's do something before we can get somebody who's failing to start doing better. I say to my team, put the client first at all times. Success is measured, not necessarily sometimes in dollars and cents, but it's the word of mouth, that um, praise that you get from your clients when they say, hey, you looking for somebody good? Go to JMB, speak to this lady. Um, those are things that can't be measured. You can't pull a, a dollar value to, to those things, the referrals that you get because you would have satisfied a client. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Let's, um, as we begin to wind down a little bit, because we're, we're almost at time, um, and it comes really fast when you're having a good time. Tell us a little bit about Moya, and what would I find you doing on a Saturday morning at 10 a.m.? Well, everybody knows I love my orchids. I love my orchids, and on a Saturday morning, I, yes, I'm up early. I, I'm just not a late sleeper. Okay. Uh, so I'm up early and I will walk through my garden. I speak to my plants, yes. <laughs> and I will cuss out any one of them who is not spiking or not. Really. I say, what's happening to you? What, what's, what's the matter? Um, so I, I'll do that first thing on a Saturday morning. I am addicted to coffee, so I'll be having a cup of coffee while I'm doing that. And then I will go to do some personal grooming Um for the first part of the morning as well. Okay, lovely. Is that I, I, typically my Saturday morning, now that my kids are grown. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. And I, I'm hoping that someday I'll, I'll feel the same or say yes. this. Um, is that an orchid that I'm seeing over your shoulder? It is, yes. It, it is. is, okay, okay. <laughs> she's, she's, right there there all over. she's right there with you, nice. Okay, great. Tell us, Moya, who inspires you and why? So, you know, I never have a straight answer for you, Wendy, so <laughs> I'll say it again. Um, so I'm, and I'm not going to tell you it's Mahatma Gandhi, Mother Teresa, no. Uh, I had a praying grandmother, mm. a grandmother who loved me. I keep saying, I, I say to her children, who would include my mom, I say to them, my grandmother loved me more than she loved you. And that's how much my grandmother showed her love. Um, my grandmother taught me, yes, humility, she taught me to pray. My grandmother taught me to be kind. My grandmother taught me to listen. And with 12 children, uh, she had to be able to find time to listen to every single one of them at some time. They have all grown up to be successful men and women. And I've loved that woman. Uh, I, I, I can't just talking about her, tear me up. Yeah. So she's been a big influence in my life. Mm -hmm. And then my godfather, uh, Roman Catholic Archbishop mm -hmm. Donald Reese Emeritus. He taught me at a young age to sit still sometime, be patient, to, to pray, he taught me to listen to God. And then he taught me to have confidence in myself. He, as, along with my husband, have been another great cheerleader. Um, he's seen beyond, you know, Moya. Sometimes when he speaks to me, I'm like, that's me? <laughs> you know, but he's been a big influence in my life. Um, I know his love. And, and he knows how I feel about him and how much I honor him. And then on my professional life, when I went to Bank of Jamaica um, and I came back from, from my study leave, I had a boss, uh, Walter Campbell, now this who mm -hmm. had so much confidence in me. 
he would give me guidance. He would give me strength when I thought that, oh, this, this, I don't know that I can do this. He would give a stern face. Yes, you can do it. Right. Obama didn't deliver. Yes, you can. He did. <laughs> <laughs> he's meant, he's, he's been, he was really a, a, a big, big uh, influence in my early career. And, um, you know, even when I left his department, he pushed me out um, and said, okay, you've conquered here, move on. Nice. So, so he's like, I didn't want to go um, back then change. I was always resistant. I was like, I'm comfortable. But he taught me to accept change and to always, always give up my best. Wonderful. And those are my main influences. Wonderful. Wonderful. My life. Um, Moya, I'm going to lean on something here, which may make you a little bit uncomfortable, but I think that also we have to recognize that as leaders, being uncomfortable is part of our growth. So I'm going to dive into something here and hopefully it's not going to derail us completely. And if it does, then that's the way we were meant to do it, right? <laughs> um, when you spoke about your grandmother, and I think this is going to be the experience of so many individuals just because of our Caribbean heritage, and the existence of the extended families that we will find a lot of people will relate to what you said. But more importantly, I want to tap into the fact that you were vulnerable with us, that it took you to a very vulnerable place. Um, and certainly when I came into the industry, again, because the majority of the leaders were male, vulnerability and leadership were very uh, diverse parts of a coin, right? Um, but as we see more lady leaders emerging, we're seeing that it's perfectly okay to be vulnerable. What are your thoughts on exposing your vulnerabilities to your team as a leader? Is it a no-go or is it something that we should encourage? Then again, that has to be compartmentalized because there is a time for tears. There is a time for showing your emotion but then there's also a time to be strong. There's a time to, to take the, 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 the tough decision. And you're not going to be taking a tough decision with tears. So you have to know, uh, and tears is not something that, for me anyway, it's not something that I can call up. Right. Um, I'm not an emotional person when I have to make a tough decision or when, uh, you know, the time is for, for us to take a particular path. I, I can, I'm very strong. I'm very certain that this is where I want to go and um, I will push back. But at the same time, I have so much empathy, especially if somebody is experiencing difficulty if somebody's experiencing pain or if somebody's just totally confused and need my help. Um, my biggest weakness is if somebody comes to me and, you know, really spill their, their guts, so to speak, and, and wear their heart on their sleeve. Um, I'm going to help you, but I'll cry right along with you. Yeah. Um, and, and it's something I think that maybe men should learn to do. Men should learn to make themselves vulnerable sometimes because there's a lot to learn there and there's a lot to pass on yeah. when people know that you're human. Yes. People know that the reason why you're taking so certain decision is sometimes out of love, not because it's not the one you want to hear, but I'm making it, I'm, I might decide that, you need to leave this job. Uh, but when, when you've been fired or let go or whatever, you have it clear in your mind why it is the decision was taken and you understand. Yeah. There's no hate or dislike because yeah. you get it. Yeah. Yeah. Emotions, emotions is a good thing, Wendy. Yes. It is. It really is. Yes. Excellent, Moya. Thank you. And I think that the whole point of being vulnerable makes you a little bit, like you said, more human yes. and relatable. People understand that, you know, you're operating from undertones of love. There you go. I've already used it, right? Undertones yes. of love. There you go. I, I'll tell you a little story. I had a, um, 
a new manager came to work uh, at the head office and I went down to her area. She, she's not a direct report to me, but she works closely with me. And she heard me joking with one of the girls about her son, you know, and something that he had done, which I remembered. And then I went and I stopped by, hey, hey, how are you doing? How is today going? And thing. And I gave her a little hug and say, have a great day. And I went to my office. And later in the evening, she came up to get something signed. And she looked at me and she says, are you really the general manager? And I said, yes. <laughs> she says, I've never met a general manager like you before. She said, I've been watching you and you're not a typical general manager. And I looked at her and I said, thank you. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. Leading from the heart, right? You're leading from the heart, Moya. Yes. Um, and, and we know that like everything else, um, success is fraught with challenges and opportunity that I like to say. I don't necessarily like to use the word challenges. I tend to say opportunities. Yes. So when faced with opportunities, what are some of your go-to strategies for overcoming obstacles, hurdles, difficulties um, to get you through to back to your path of success? An aspect of me that probably didn't come out in this interview was the fact that I'm a planner. I plan, I write, I make notes. I, at the end of every day, I bring out my notepad. Everybody knows about my handy dandy notepad. I'm, yes. I, I'm nowhere without it. Yeah. And, uh, I make notes what I need to accomplish tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And as I go through the day, I'll tick off. And whatever it is that I don't achieve today, it's at the top for tomorrow. Yes. yes. But planning your life, strategizing, that is the key to your success. Things are not going to just happen. You have to work at it. You have to detail how you want to achieve it and then go for it. Fantastic. And that is, that is probably the biggest advice I could give anyone. Plan, Wonderful. organize, make it happen. Wonderful. Wonderful. And I don't think that there is anything um, untoward about that. I think everyone should understand that, you know, one of the things I remember growing up hearing and learning to live by is if you fail to plan, dot, dot, dot. Right. Yes. I think everybody can basically finish that sentence. So, and yes, you had mentioned it before. So, so we do know that you're a planner, Moya. You, we do know that you're a planner. And, I make notes. <laughs> yeah, and I live by that as well. I have a little one that sits next to my bedside because some of my yes. most brilliant thoughts come in the middle of my sleep, actually. Creativity. I do that too, Wendy. I get up at night yes. and write. <laughs> yep, yep, that's when the magic happens, when you're truly yes. at rest. Um, as we come down to the close of the interview, um, Moya, or to our, the close of our little discussion, our little chat, I don't like to say interview, what advice would you give to the next generation of lady leaders? Don't think of yourself as a lady leader. Think of yourself as a leader. Don't stereotype yourself. If you start doing that, others are going to do it. Your male counterpart is your equal. The brain is not a male brain, a female brain necessarily. Yes, they say women are from wherever and men are from wherever. But really, your ability is similar to any other man's ability. Never short sell yourself. Whatever you achieve is because of hard work. Whatever you achieve is because of you, the inner you. The financial sector is changing every day. Management style is changing. Leadership is changing. Embrace change. Don't sit down and say, this is how I did it at university, or this is how it was done when I just came here. Engage your team members. Engage the world and read. Always, always keep yourself on top of your area of management, your your, your Increase your knowledge every day. Find something to read because you never, ever, ever stop learning. And that is what I would advise to young people coming in the industry to do. Embrace the change. Keep learning. Fantastic. Moya, I cannot thank you enough. I mean, um, 
this has given me so much more than even I anticipated coming into it. And what a wonderful, incredible person you are. Keep leading from the heart, Moya, and keep the undertones of love flowing because it touches the hearts of people. And perhaps you don't even understand the impact, the significance of the impact. So thank you for being authentically, Moya. And of course, for, for sharing all of the wonderful advice with us that you have today. Have a wonderful day. And like the true leader that you are, I must say, enjoy the rest of your vacation. I know I am posed on the beginning of it. So I hope that the rest of it is just as glorious as the beginning has started. So thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Wendy. And as we say in Jamaica, one love. <laughs> one love, sister. And one love. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay.